الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم If you look at uh, Isaiah was how old? 22 years old. This is second kings, right? Ahaziah. Uh, Ahaziah. Uh, yeah. Sure. So Joram. Um, so Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Ataliah, the granddaughter of Umri, the king of Israel, right? That's what it says. Good. Yep. It makes sense. 22, am I right? Okay. That's what it says. Yeah. So if you look in the same Bible, but now we go to 2 Chronicles, chapter 22, 2. Ahaziah was 42 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. Now somebody might be like, oh, it's a different Isaiah, but his mother's name was Ataliyah, the granddaughter of Umri, mm -hmm. right? So the reign was only one year, so it's not like, you know, different. Was it, was it king of Israel? It uh, depends. Of yeah. Jerusalem, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Right? We'll In go both back of them. to the other one? Sure, no problem. So. Jerusalem. He reigned one year in Jerusalem. He was 22 yeah. years old when he became king. Hmm. Sure. Yeah, I'd have to look at that again, for sure. Right? So this is just one, so let's, let's take a few more, right? Um, here, Second Chronicles, you can help me pronounce it if you like. Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, I'm with you, bro. Jehoiakim? Jehoiakim, sure, we'll go with that. Um, was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for three months and ten days, and he did evil on the side of the Lord. So how old was he? Eight years, Eight years old, old when he became king and reigned in Jerusalem. And again, months. Jerusalem, yeah. three months. Okay. Um, now we'll go back to Second Kings 24.8. Jehoiakim was, was 18. was 18 years old when he became king and reigned in Jerusalem for three months. Mm -hmm. You see like the same kind of inconsistent numbering. Um, but this is just, I mean, I have, like you can see, I have many, many, even if you look at the genealogy of Jesus in the New Testament, right? And Jacob begotten Joseph, the husband of Mary, to whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Jacob, yeah. Right, so Jacob is the father of? Joseph, the husband of Mary. Husband mm -hmm. of Mary, father of Joseph, got it. So in Luke, then you have now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age being supposed the son of Joseph, the son of Eli. So who's the father of Joseph here? Well, who's Eli? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's good a question, good question, right? Yeah. So it's not Jacob, right? <laughs> and you, I mean, you can, you can, when you go home, you have a Bible, I'm sure you do a side-by-side -side reading, mm -hmm. go to Matat, go, go down, the, down the lineage, they're all different, mm -hmm. right? So what happens is these are the accounts of men, right? People give their accounts, and in accounts of men, you have discrepancies, it happens, right? Like, we're at a park, and you know, somebody asked, what color was I wearing? Somebody can make a mistake, and that's perfectly understandable. But then that's not the words of God, right? The words of God are perfect, without, without contradiction, without numeric mistakes. Right. Even if you look at how did Judas die, right? How did Judas, Judas die, die by hanging. Excellent. So now we have here an ax. Now this man purchased a, with a field with the wages of his inequity. So what did he do with the money? He purchased the field with it, right? Mm -hmm. And falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all of his entrails gushed out. Mm -hmm. So there's no hanging here, right? He fell, mm -hmm. right? But as you mentioned, you will also find the other account in the Bible as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple. So now here, he didn't purchase a field. Right? He threw the money in the temple and departed and then went and hanged himself. So did he hang himself? Did he, did he burst fall off? from the branch? Right, did he? Right. Where is that, right? If you do if you do fall from a branch, you don't fall headlong. Right? Headlong is... I don't know. I'm uh, trying to... Uh, I think of it, you, you know, you know right. physics, right? So like when you're, when you're in movement and you fall, your head goes first, right? Mm -hmm. When you're stra straight and you fall, your feet go first, mm -hmm. right? right? And how does that burst its entrails? 
What did he do with the money? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, how many times did the crow crow uh, before uh, Jesus was betrayed? I mean, we can find we can tons of them, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the numeric ones are obviously the most obvious, right? Here you have Solomon had four thousand stalls of horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed uh, in the chariot cities with the king of Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here, same Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, here we have... Yeah, the numbers are pretty confusing. Huh? The they are, right? So. Now, well, how, what do you do with that kind of information? Good question. Like, have um, you, like, were you a Christian before, and that kind of crumbled your faith in a way? Not really. So let me let answers? me let me explain it to you, right? Yeah. So I was uh, raised in a rather a secular family, right? Oh, my family is from a Muslim country, but I don't have any Muslim friends growing up. So growing up, all my friends were either Christians or Catholics. So I used to go to church with them, just you know, out of friendship. So I used to go to Bible study. Are you from San Diego? Or? Okay, so in San Diego, we have a church called Horizon off of Genesee and Balboa. So I used to go there on Wednesdays. We used to have this huge Bible studies. And this was actually given to me there, right? Somebody gave this to me as a gift to read. So I started to mark things. I mean, it's not just a contradiction. There's many things that didn't make sense to me or I had questions about. I'll give you an example, right? Here we have, and if a man beats, this is in Exodus, Old Testament, right? And if a man beats his male or female servant with a rod, so that he dies under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he remains alive a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his property. Mm -hmm. Right? That's pretty, man, for God's laws, that's disturbing, would you say? No? I mean, it depends on the context, I think. I think we can read the context. A man beats his male or female servant. Right, but I mean, like, the context of, like, the rest of the page and... Time. When would it be okay to beat your slave to death if you didn't mean the lie of a day? It's okay because he's your property. Well, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't think so. But I, I agree with you. Know, like, you know, you how do know. you how do you feel when you read that? Yeah. I, I feel this is not the law of God. God would not approve law where you where you if own God somebody. God said that. Who are we to say that's not the law of God? Excellent question. Yeah. So, as a person who wants to find the truth. Uh, I believe that God is just, right? I'm sure you believe that as well, right? And I don't believe this is just, right? If you, if Where you have- Where does that come from though? Right, you, okay, so you tell me, do you believe- you. Oh, Okay, yeah. I, I tell Where you- Where does that come from? No problem. I believe we have what's called fitra. Fitra is a natural compass, a natural thing that you're born with. Like if you see uh, a little child being raped and murdered, uh, nobody needs to tell me that's wrong. I feel that's wrong, and I'm sure you guys would as well, right? Yeah, in Romans, so, they would call, in Romans, Paul, Paul talked about that being called written on our hearts. Okay. It's like we already understand the moral law. There you the go. The question's not how we know it, though. Mm -hmm. Why is it good? Who so, said? Uh, why is it bad, you mean? No, why? No, I mean, I'm sorry, talking about that. Why? Right. We think that is wrong. Okay. Why do, why is that bad? Right? Who says? Yeah, we may know it's bad. There you go. But why so, the, so, so I told you, like, I feel this is wrong because my fitra, my, as you said, the law in your heart or your natural state of understanding sees this as, as, as not just. Oh, yeah? Now, my question to you it is... seems kind of brutal. Right, way, yeah. so do you see this as justice? Well, if I believe that, and I'm sure you can follow the same logic, if I believe that God is the just 100% holy God. Now you can call it the Christian God, the Muslim. Allah. Let's just say you God. Can call I'm it, good. You can call it Krishna or whatever. Whatever we believe when it comes to God. If we believe he is 100% just, that means he is he has his holy reasons for the just command. He has reasons for that. The, the logic goes, who are we to decide? Does God have the freedom to be God, even though we do not agree sure. with his law? Yeah, I can feel 100%. I can feel that the whole Bible is unjust. Really? What? Do you not, feel that? Or? No, oh, I yeah. do not. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I as I, I could be one other person here that right. could point out and just think like, wow, don't have sex before marriage? That sounds really cruel. 
why do I like cool? I mean, it could be so, cool. so let's let's, it let's take cool. it let's take it step by step, right? For sure. So for sure. first thing is, I think me and you do or all of us agree that this is pretty brutal, right? I mean, a person is not your property, and if cool, you kill based them, based on our feelings, right? Based on our fitra, right? On understanding your, I mean, would you really want to say to your children that? There was a time when God said, people are your property, and if you beat them, as long as they live a well, day... they would have to read the whole Bible to understand what right. is the holy law, like what right. is in Exodus, what sure. did the slave do? Who the, was? Well, but that's a good point. There's yeah. nothing here. We don't know the slave's oh. name, we don't know their past. This is not about a particular slave. This is the law, right? This talks about blasphemy and all the rulings yeah. about second wives and the rulings related to that. So this is not one particular slave that did something. This is that if a person beats a male or female servant with a rod and that person dies right there, then there's punishment. Notwithstanding, if they live a day or two, there is no punishment because they're property. For he is the owner's property. Yes. yes. So you you so. you would believe that God ordained that? It depends. If that is his law, then God, the just 100% holy God, has proclaimed it to be so for reasons. God's not a God of confusion. God I agree. His and this is confusing, right? Yeah, right? it could be. Okay. It is confusing. So, so we would have to understand that He is just 100%. So therefore, how we feel when it comes to that, we might be taking it wrongly. Because what did that God slave do to be beaten? Well, once again, there is no particular slave. There is no. There is no context to what there was. What was done? Or female servant with a yeah. Go ahead. So he dies. So I mean. Yeah. You, you, you're really basically you're saying that if you have a slave and you beat him so bad he, he dies after a day, it doesn't matter because that's your property. You you can't believe that's just. I mean, I, I just okay, good. So, I mean, we both agree it's not just. Okay. If I had a bad day at work. So I, I mean, is there a reason given? I mean, is there a crime given or? Is there an implied reason? What, what would that reason be? Contained with each other and strikes the others. He shall surely be punished if a man beats his male or female servant with a rod. If he remains alive a day or two, he shall not use his property. So, what would be the law? that ordains um, an owner to beat their female servant? Like, did they rape their daughter? None of that is there. I mean, there is no, there is well, you no. you gotta read the whole law. I did. <laughs> I've read this whole chapter. You can read it at no, no, home no, too. No, not the chapter. You gotta read Leviticus, you gotta read Deuteronomy. I, I have read the read Bible cover to cover. Right? And I'm sure and you what, have as well. How do you well. feel about the Bible? That's how oh, uh, I, you have the scripture. Sure, I find a lot of contradictions. Clear, like I, we've showed you, numeric contradictions that could not be the words of God. I find many it laws. Cannot be the words of it God. cannot be because God's word is perfect, right? Without mistakes, right? Okay. So when you see clear contradictions that are clear numeric contradictions, obviously that can't be the word of God, right? Well, no. it can be. Not contradictions, but when you look throughout the Bible in its entirety, and you have to connect the dots. Sure. So Isaiah being like, 42 or 22, how do you connect those dots? Hmm? Uh, Isaiah being 42 or 22 is just a clear numeric mistake, right? It's got to be either one or the other, right? Huh? Or can you be 22 and 42 at the same time? It's, a dog that's, ears. A, that's a slippery slope because right. throughout the Bible we always see the number seven. Like, are you aware of those verses where it's like uh, seven, seven, seven days, seven this, seven that? Sure, nine, 1, right? We've signed 1, 40 1, a lot as well. Like, is it truly 1,000 or 40, 40, 40, 40? Yeah. So, numbers but we're talking about ages, right? Eight that's years old or 18 perfect. years old. So you're saying that, that that's not really an age? Well, it could also depend on just the laws and what what is what what is grounds to become a king in Israel at a certain age when it comes to legal. If the rule is only ruled for one year or three months, you can't be 22 and 42. You can't be eight and 18. 
You cannot have 40,000 and 4,000. These are clear numeric contradictions, right? Even if you look at the MacArthur Study Bible and some of them, he says this is an error of, of manuscripts, right? So this means this is not the words of God, it's the account of men. And the account of men can have error. And that's understandable. But then it's no longer the word of God, right? If there is clear, yeah, contradiction, it cannot be the word of God because God is a God of logic. So what is the answer? Agreed. There you go. So who is the father of Joseph? Is it Jacob or Heli? Right? Who is his father? Right? Is it Matan or Matat? Right? If you go all the way back, do a side-by-side -side reading, the generations are different. So the answer is, these are accounts that people have made up that well, were in Kone Greek. Matthew is the Jewish lineage, and the other lineage is a different culture. What it's culture whole, is that? It's a whole different... Um, and, see, uh, this one was how more the Jewish lineage. And there's a lineage, I think, based on the lineage of Mary. How could that be? Because this says that Joseph was begotten by Jacob, and the other says he's the son. How could that be Mary then? Well, son of Eli. We, we have to do more research because there's okay. other people in there that are referred to by two names as well, like okay, Peter but and Simon. If that's two names, Matat is also a different name, Michli is also a different name. Do a side by side reading, right? And the number of generations are different. Right? Well, we, so, yeah, I mean, we could definitely look for well, yeah. more research into it for sure. No, you showed me this. Yeah, I'll have to definitely take another look at it. So what I answer have it. you come to a conclusion for yourself? I have come to a conclusion that these were works written in Kone Greek uh, way past the time of Jesus on this earth. Meaning most of these, if you look at the manuscript that you have, they're going to be 150, 200 years after the time of Jesus, right? Most of the authors of these Gospels, if you look at research on it, they're anonymous, right? They're named as a Gospel according to, but they're not, the, they're not writings of direct eyewitness accounts. So when you write something later, hearing the story, somebody's going to say it a little bit different, somebody's going to say it a little bit different, and that's understandable. That's why you have these numeric and name contradictions, right? And that's understandable, but what that tells you is this is not the words of God. It's the words of men, and that's why it has the mistakes of men. We have the Quran, the words of God, right? Take it with you. Yeah. Read it. Now, how is this the word of God? Excellent question. So the Quran is not the word of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He couldn't read or write, right? Who's so Muhammad? Muhammad is a messenger, right? Prophet Muhammad, you never heard his name? Prophet? Yeah. I, I mean, I know of the name, but oh, I just yeah. never got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so Allah, according to our belief, the God, the only one worthy of worship, sends prophets to bring his message. We believe Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad were all prophets sent with a message, right? And some of the message gets corrupted, as we see here. People give their accounts later attributed to God, and then you see mistakes come forward, right? The Quran, on the other hand, is memorized letter by letter, word by word, in perfection by people from the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, till our time. Perfection by people. But the perfection of preservation, right? Meaning... Which is not perfect. Well, it is perfect because Allah ordained it to be. Let me, let me explain. I know that? I'll, I will show you, okay? So let's do this. I'll sh let's do a little quick fun test. You didn't give me this, right? Uh, no, but you can have it. Oh, no, somebody else. Oh, gotcha. That's right. All right. Pick a chapter, any chapter you like. Just, you know, here's a list like, of chapters. like magician's cards, do No, no, no magician's card. You'll see, it's, it's, a, it's a factual way. Try it. Wait, you want me to just do a um, finger? Yeah, so let's or do... Just... Two, bam. No. There you go. Okay. So the beginning is chapter Saba, right? Habibi. A Saba. Raise... Saba? Yeah. All praise be to Allah, the one who created the heaven and the earth. That's it. So, when was you see, this whole thing written? This was written in the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? So there were scribes. 30 years? 23 years. 23 years. From the time of the first revelation till his death, peace and blessings be upon him, right? It was, and it was all written complete? All written complete. Time. Now, it was compiled as a book format in the time of the next caliph, which is one year after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? Abu Bakr, right? But during his lifetime, as you just heard from his memory, they memorized the entire Quran, word by word, letter by letter. 
from the beginning to the end. And this is not a magician trick. I was showing you. No, that's I not know, what I was I, I got you. I got you. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Man. Relax. I was just showing you that at random you picked a chapter and he can read it from memory. And like him, we have thousands here. We have millions across the world, right? So what that does is we never have a problem of there being contradictions. Why? Because when from the time of the Prophet, from that beginning, people memorize, right? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Ubay ibn Ka'ab, Uthman uh, ibn Affan, I can name you at least 30, 40 that we can give you their biographies that memorize the whole Quran, letter by letter, word by word. That's why when you see the Catholic Bible and the Christian Protestant Bible, you see the differences, right? Well, you see there's the a huge difference, difference because right. each book has like hundreds of years in between each other. Exactly. I mean, I think, the exactly. Book, I think there was a prophecy in Isaiah, Isaiah 52 or 53 when it comes to the Jesus. That was written 750 years before the birth of Christ. I'm with you. So. Now, when you look at that time span, and then the writing of the New Testament, which happened over a time span, you know the original manuscripts that you get, that you would base the Greek, I have a Greek New Testament if you want to take a look at it, right? Most of those are from the seventh century, right? Uh, actually, it's 30 AD. 30 AD, a full well, manuscript? Well, maybe, there well, is maybe not. 50 AD. Well, a complete we, manuscript. Well, we have the book of Mark that that sources are saying that it was written probably in 50 to 60 AD. Complete New Testament manuscript. Mark, yes. Mark is one book. Right? Yeah, which I'm talking about the complete say, New Testament. John, Luke, yeah. So the no. complete New Testament. But when you have the book of Mark, that early on. Right. Like you know what's the earliest long. manuscript that you have? You don't have complete Mark from 50 AD either, right? Go home and look it up, research it, right? I've, Read Dr. Bart Ehrman. I have all their research. I have the have books. Have you heard of Gary Habermas? Uh, I'm sure I have. I don't yeah, know he's definitely one of the top New Testament sure. scholars. And they could date the book of Mark all the way back to maybe the, the complete or book? 60, 80. Yeah, the complete letter book of Mark. All right. Let, yeah. Let's go home and take a look at that. I would love to. Okay, great. Oh, so let's say 60. You said 60 or 70, 80, right? Like so that's how long after the time of Jesus? 40, 50, 20, 30 years, which uh, is pretty damn, right? It's pretty damn close. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. It's, it's, okay, so now you have that time period. Who were the scribes that, that learned from Jesus what happened until the time was written? Who would have learned? Who, who wrote them? Mark, we know. Well, it wasn't Peter, but Peter did have. Peter did have. Let, let, let me give you an example. Let, let's look at Hebrews, right? The chapter Hebrews. Chapter Hebrews. Oh, oh, book of Hebrews. Book of Hebrews, yeah, yeah. right? Who wrote Hebrews? Actually, no, we don't know. But the language is fairly similar to Paul's. Right, so meaning the author is anonymous. So we don't even know who wrote Hebrews. And we're depending on it being the word of God. Well, that doesn't mean it's not true. But I mean, who, who wrote it? Huh? I, I mean, it could have been a liar, it could have been a thief. I mean, we, we don't know who wrote the book. How could we say that this is accurate? Well, we could if it's consistent. Can, it's good, but, if it's good and consistent right. with the logic and the heart of God. Okay, but when we find clear contradictions between the books, like between Hebrew. the accounts, sure. Why does Hebrews contradict? Uh, I mean, we can. Uh, I, I can go through a lot of different that you will find between the different chapters. If you want to look at Hebrews by itself, well, well, I'll look into some, and we'll look into those, well, right? Right. What was the original point we were talking about? The original point or being that, was, that we cannot say so this I don't is, want to take us so, down a rabbit hole. I got you, no problem. Yeah. Point being, with these clear numeric contradictions, with these differences that we find, I don't believe this is the word of God. And that one is. And that one is, right? Because, because we don't was, find such things. Because it was written in about 25, over the span and all throughout but Muhammad's lifetime. Yes, 23 years. About 23 years, Which is from the little. prophethood till his Whereas death. Ever can come together and copy off of each other to make sure that the whole story is consistent. Excellent, sure. Like Memorize a, it. Like a conspiracy, almost. How would that be a conspiracy well, because when they're we're writing? All banding right? together and making sure that we're writing the same thing so we don't pause <laughs> tend so, to screw So let me let me let me explain this, right? If there's a professor giving a talk, right? And during the lecture, you write down the notes and other students write the notes at the same time and get it right, that's not a conspiracy, right? But if after the lecture, years later, anonymous authors start to write books, ascribing it to people who weren't the ones actually writing, that would be a conspiracy. So, well, we've got to make, well, 
I mean, let, let, let's, let's, let's just go to the root belief system, right? Do you believe Jesus? Okay, tell me, does God know everything? He is all that again. All that. Okay. Do you believe Jesus was God? I believe it. When he was on earth, was he God? Yes, fully God. Okay. So, when we find in the Bible that nobody knows the hour, not even the sun, right? So how could God not know? Well, it's the same thing. How could God get hungry? How could God get hungry? Good question, on, right? right? But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So, as you said, God knows everything. And if Jesus was fully God, He would know. But it says the Son does not know. But He also says, Mark. I and the Father are one. Sure. So Let's say, can we as humans come no to problem. That Let's say I say we are one nation. Me and you are one. We're together. Does that mean we're physically one? No, okay. but we're humans. So, we are humans, of course. But if we say, uh, me, my whole household, we're all together, we are one. Even my cat, my dog, everybody, we're on the same page. You know, doesn't mean that we're all the same, right? When you have a clear evidence, because you said God knows everything, right? And it clearly shows the sun does not know, then obviously he's not God, right? I wouldn't come to that conclusion right away. Why not? Because remember, like I like I asked before, mm -hmm. how did Jesus become hungry after 40 days of fasting if he was God? Good question. He's not God. I'm with you on it. So, <laughs> would one at least ask the question, mm -hmm. is God able to limit himself for the purpose at hand? Sure. When what do you, you say, think? Let me answer. When you say, is God able or capable, we don't get into the hypotheticals. Why? Because God can do anything, right? But there are certain things that would make that, that would make him no longer God then, right? Basically, you would no longer be, let, let me give you an example. You have a square, right? Can you have a circle square? Impossible. Impossible. Square. Excellent. Now, it's if like, you have a square, could you reshape it into a circle? Like let's say you have a Play-Doh, right? You make a square, can you reshape it into a circle? Yes. But then it would no longer but then it would no longer be a square. Correct. Okay. So God can do anything, but if God doesn't know, then he's that's no longer God. Because God knows everything. That's from the sifat or the characteristics of God that he's all knowing. God doesn't get hungry, God doesn't get tired, he doesn't weaken, right? So if you're saying that he did, then that means he was no longer God. Able to what? Or <laughs> if you're saying God came on earth and then he no longer knew, right? Then that would mean that he was no longer God. God the Son, as in his words, does not know. But God the Father so, does. So, so, so again, that would mean the Son is not God because you earlier said God knows everything. And here it shows the sun and didn't say God the sun, it just said the sun yes. does not know. So when sun does not know, then by definition, then he's no longer God, right? That's still not the case. W why is because that? Because we know that Jesus, the son of God, proclaimed the son of God because he knows he's from the, he said, he proclaimed he's from the line of David, therefore the coming son, the Messiah, the son of God, the leader of Israel out of Roman, like, the Roman group. He himself proclaimed, I and the Father are one. And even though sure. if he is the Son of God, that is true. If he said, I and the Father are one, that is also true. I mean, how God, how can God be three people? We don't know. I, I agree with you. Thing. Does it make it, any sense? It sounds like it's, it it's confusion, and God is not the author of confusion, right? We also can't I wouldn't, understand I God. Wouldn't, I wouldn't, right, but 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 think of it this way, right? Think of it. I wouldn't jump to the conclusion that just because we don't know something, yeah. therefore okay. it's confusion. Let me ask you this: How many sons? How many sons does God have? A begotten son, only begotten. one. Only one. Okay. I mean, that's a that's a tricky question. Because how many sons? Like, are we talking about the sperm, an egg? You think God had sperm? 
No. Okay, I was like, well, where do no, we go there? Okay, no, I okay, said, yeah, but, yeah. but you know, but you, are, are you getting, I don't my, believe are you getting God, my question? I do, but, but yeah, when we like look in the Bible, we talking right? genetics? Like, no. Then you would have no sons, right? Because you don't believe Jesus sperm God, right? Or you believe that? Jesus. No, I do not believe. Okay, whoa! Well, you scared no. me for a minute. <laughs> no, but we right. know that he is the begotten Son of God. He okay. gave his only begotten Son. Uh, it was so I got believes in him. No problem. Perish, then you shall say to Pharaoh, this Old Testament, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Well, that's. That's like, that's uh -huh. like calling your employee, like, excuse me, son. Figured it. Oh, okay. Like, like. So here it becomes or, now. Or, or, if a, or if just a random child tries to, I don't know, wants a book. I got like, you. Sorry, it's son. figured it. Like, sorry, time. son. Like, beer's not for you. Or gotcha. Something like that. Like, sorry, you can't drink, son. Excellent. Like, excellent. I, it's a, I it's got a you. sign of honor. Like, I I'm care with about you. you Endearment, so yeah. but not really a son, son. No. Okay, good. That's not um, how I would see that. All right. He shall build a house for my name, and I shall establish his throne of his kingdom forever. Talking about Solomon, referring to David here. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. The seed of David, not Solomon. Yeah. Right, Solomon. So Solomon the is... The seed. I'm sorry? The seed. Down the line, the lineage. This is regarding Solomon, not, not David, right? This is referring no, to, regarding... he will build a house for my name. That's Solomon, the Temple of Solomon, right? Mm -hmm. So he's called the son as well. I got you. Let's look at begotten, okay? Book of Psalms, I'm sure you've done it. Here, David, Old Testament, right? I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son, today I have begotten you. His lineage, yes. Sir. No, no. I will declare the Lord has said to me, to David, you are my son, today I have begotten you. You know? What do you mean, no? It's right there. <laughs> well, that's... Come on, bro. No, no. You're, 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 hey. you're, you're stretching this, right? Come on. No, I'm not actually not stretching it. Because okay. we know, because the line of David, that Jesus is of the line of David. Sure. But, but this doesn't say anything about the line. This is David saying, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, to David, this is Old Testament. Dave, David's not the capital M. What, what do you mean capital M? This is from Greek. There's no capitals here, right? You no, are that, my that's son. Hebrew. This Hebrew. is Hebrew, you're right. Yeah. So Hebrew is not about capital. There is no reference to the lineage here. To me. God has said to me. This is Psalms of David. Come on, bro. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> go home, pray on it. Think about it. Look oh, up the I'm look up. Look I appreciate that. Right? But you're trying to sell the Quran to me. I'm not selling anything to you, right? So I, I, I'm here to tell me about the Quran. Uh, sure, no problem. One more thing I'll tell you before we go there, right? If you go back to the genealogy of Jesus again, if you go to the end, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, right? The son of Adam, the son of God, Adam, right? But again, we don't believe Adam is. Physically, you're saying those are all terms of endearment, even the father. Well, I feel like that's just referring to the fact that God created him. I mean, Excellent. I agree. So God created Jesus as well. God created Moses as well. But I would. They're referring to the son, the lowercase s. The again, you, the you, you're putting the cases in there because in the original well, Greek or Hebrew, there is none. It's worth looking at. Excellent. Yeah. Look at it. Look, I appreciate it. So let me tell you about the Quran. First thing. The Quran, this is not the words of Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's not the words of his companions, right? I've heard that before, yeah. Excellent, was, good. So it really like, it's not the word of Muhammad, right? It's not? Okay, so yeah. they were wrong, so. Who was wrong? Wh whoever told me Somebody that, told that you that the, Muhammad the, the Muhammad wrote that. Oh, uh, it wasn't a Muslim, don't uh, worry. It was I, 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 I believe they weren't, because <laughs> yeah, Muhammad so couldn't read or write, yeah. so <laughs> it would be physically impossible for him to write this, right? So this is a book that was revealed. Right? And how was it revealed? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was not a poet, right? Like there were poets in the Arabian Peninsula, they were very eloquent, but he wasn't. Like historically, you can look up any biography of his, he never wrote poetry. When he started to recite these words, the greatest poets of Arabia couldn't write anything comparable to it. The Quran challenged them, bring something like it. They couldn't. 
right? There were news in here that the Prophet Muhammad didn't know about. Like the Jews, they asked the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, how did Moses end up in, in, uh, in Egypt? When the people of Israel were originally from the Levant, from Sham, the Prophet didn't know. Allah then revealed to him the story of Yusuf, Joseph, and how when he went, right? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he didn't know the scientific facts that are in the Quran, right? For example, the Quran talks about all the heavenly bodies being in an orbit. Right now, an Arabian uh, uh, illiterate man in 14 plus centuries ago in Arabia would not know those things, right? How sweet water and salt water touch but don't mix. A man who's never been to a place with salt water, right? How there's waves under the ocean, many things that you would find that would be impossible for him to know at that time, right? On top of that, on top of that, you have no such numeric contradictions. Many people try to find this and that. We've, we've had challenges, people came out here, we clarified all of those, right? Why? Because this is perfectly preserved words of Allah, the words of God. It even refers to the Prophet, it talks to him, right? Ya Yuhan Nabi, O Prophet, right? So it's not him, right? Even censures him at times, Abbas wa Tawalla, right? So what does that mean? This is the words of the one who sent Jesus, sent Moses, sent Abraham, sent all those prophets, right? The difference being that this is not what was written 70 years or 50 years or 80 years by anonymous authors who would have their own accounts. This was preserved in its original time as it was revealed, memorized letter by letter, word by word, right? In the first year after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Caliph Abu Bakr, the first Khalifa, he compiled it as a book from the written copies and the memories, right? We had, as we said, hundreds of people that had already memorized it at that time. But some of them were dying in battles and things, so he wanted to make sure he preserved it. In the third Caliph, again, this is still the campaign of the Prophet, peace be upon him, within around 12 years of the death of the Prophet ﷺ, he standardized these and sent these out. Now, today, there are manuscripts that are, that are not complete. For example, the one in Birmingham. It's parts of the Quran, it's called the Birmingham Quran, that have been carbon dated by non-Muslims to the end of the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, right? We can read off those and off this and find no discrepancies, right? Then we have other manuscripts like the Sana'a Quran and the Tawbi Quran, who are the manuscripts from the time of Uthman, the, the Caliph Uthman, that have been preserved complete manuscripts, right? On top of all of that, we have brothers like this and other brothers that have memorized the entire Quran, even how you recite it. Like think of the accuracy, even how you recite it and the difference in the accents of the Arab that is acceptable, it's called Qur'an, all of those are memorized letter by letter, word by word, phonetically sound by sound, all the way back to the Prophet, peace be upon him, right? So this is why I believe this is the word of Allah. It's a gift for you. Take it, read it. When you have questions, so come back. You, so what do you do with that? You read it and you act upon it. No, like your, your life, salvation. Excellent. Like you believe in one God, right? You follow the Prophet of your time. This is how you attain salvation, right? So if we were in the time of Jesus. Follow the Prophet. Yeah. Of course. Because I, I was wondering, like, why is Muhammad put on a higher pedestal than the past prophets? I mean, belief-wise, we believe in all of them equally. Right? Meaning that our belief in Moses, like you see people make cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah. You see Jews make fun of Jesus and call him like an illegitimate child and things like this. We don't do that. As a Muslim, you never see us make fun of Jesus. We love him. We believe he was a prophet. We don't believe he was the physical son of God. Maybe terms like son were used for endearment, as you said. We don't believe he was God. But we do believe he was righteous. He was born to a Virgin Mary, a miraculous birth. We believe he was a, 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 a messenger sent to the people, right? As Moses was sent, as Abraham was sent, and everybody had their miracles. Adam had no father or mother. Eve either, right? Those were miracles as well. But we don't believe they're physical children of God. You can say maybe a term of endearment in a certain language, but we believe God doesn't have a wife, kids, roommates, any of that kind of stuff, right? We believe if we were in the time of Moses, we would follow Moses. He was the prophet of the time. He was a Muslim. He submitted his will. He was a Muslim. If we were in the time of Abraham, we would follow Abraham. In the time of the prophet Muhammad, we follow him. Peace and blessings be upon all of them. Even when we say their name, look how respectful we are. If I say Jesus, I say peace be upon him. Do if I say Moses, to, do you have to do that? Yes, out of respect. Still, are you still saved if you don't do that? This is not about salvation here. This is a oh, form of respect. To do with no, no. Uh, in Islam, 
saying peace be upon him is a, a, a term of respect for them, right? That is not the core of salvation. Salvation is not to worship other than Allah, right? As you see in the Ten Commandments, right? You're, you're one Lord, right? Don't worship idols, don't worship, like when you go to churches and you see idols and you see statues and things like this, we're against all that. You'll never go to a mosque and see an idol or a statue. We don't believe in worshiping anything but the one creator, one Allah, one, the one who was the God of, the one that Jesus prayed to, right? When Jesus put his forehead to the ground and prayed, the one he prayed to, that's the one we prayed to. In that way, we put our forehead to the ground, right? So we believe that salvation is based on not doing shirk. Shirk is to associate partners with Allah. We don't say, yeah, you can, we can worship through Mary. You can worship through a monkey. You can worship through saints. We don't believe in that, right? We worship directly one Allah. We don't pray through Ali, a companion, or to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. We believe you worship none but one Allah, okay? And you follow the Prophet of the time. So if we were in the time of Noah, we would follow Noah, right? We are currently in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He is the last of Prophets, as the Quran tells us, right? So then this is the Prophet we follow. That is salvation. So, um, and this is just a curious question, because you just spent so I like much curiosity. time breaking down the Bible and saying sure. there's inconsistencies and all sure. that. Sure. But you're also talking about how you still believe the Bible. I do. Still so so let me message. let me explain that, right? I believe in the message that was given to Moses, right? But historically, let me finish. You can have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. So we know that the original writings, whatever was that in the time of Moses, is not with us today. Most of that was not. Even if you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, they're not carbon dated to anywhere close to the time of Moses. Okay. So that means that original message. What was there, we don't know. Much of what is in the Old Testament today, and you'll find discrepancies, for example, in the Catholic uh, compilation of the Old Testament and the Christian, the Protestant, and the Jewish, and others, and so on. So that means those are later compiled. We don't believe those are the preserved words of God. There might be aspects of the message of Moses there, yes. But that is not the words of God preserved, right? These are writings of men that have been attributed to God. And the same is true for Jesus. We believe in the message of Jesus. We believe in the message that Jesus brought to his people. But what was written later in Koine Greek, not even in Aramaic, by some anonymous authors and other authors that there is dispute who they actually were and so on and so on, right? So here, we do not believe in that, right? We believe that there might be aspects of that truth still in it, right? But this is the writings of men. The true message of Jesus, we believe in. What about um, the Ten Commandments? Do you guys believe in the Ten Commandments? So everything in the Bible, we, we compare it to the Quran. Whatever is in line with the Quran, then we say this could be correct. Whatever we find, for example, Lot having sex with his daughters, right? It's in the Bible. And he's also called a righteous servant. Like, like you know, that's kind of... How does a righteous servant get so drunk he has repeated sex with daughter one one night, the other, the other night, right? We don't believe that's true, right? Why? Because the Quran tells us that Lot was pious, he was a good person, he didn't, we don't have any evidence to say he had sex with his daughters. So those aspects to reject. So the concept of there being one God, sure, we find in the Quran, قُلْ وَاللَّهُ أَحَدْ So we believe in it, not worshipping idols. Sure, we believe in that, right? Don't kill, don't steal, no problem with that. But when you bring in concept that we do not find in the Quran or contrary to it, and we don't even know who the authors of those were and so on, then we cannot accept those. But how do you know that any of it's true? We don't, right? So we have the Quran that we know to be true, so that's what we use as our guide. What if Muhammad was based in the history of the Bible? What do you mean based like, in the history? Like you're, like you're saying Muhammad believed the history, like the Old Testament, right? Uh, we believe Muhammad believed in what was revealed to Moses, right? Not, not in what we have so today. The plagues yeah. of Egypt, would Muhammad believe that? Or did the, he believe that? Sure, because they're in the Quran, right? But again, oh, okay. yeah, so, so many, yeah, so that's why you got to read it. <laughs> I've read the Bible cover to cover. You, you can read it and we can still have so conversations. There's a lot of similar stories. Sure, sure. The same God that revealed the message to Moses, to David, to Jesus, revealed it to Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon all of them. So many things you will find similar, right? But the things that you find, uh, for example, David uh, having raped or had sex with his soldiers, you know the story, right? When he when he sent the soldier out to die, I mean, I can read it for you, it's pretty disgusting, but uh, yeah, so, uh, right? So here, 
we're not gonna, we don't believe that, right? Why? Because David is called a prophet. And how can somebody who's called a prophet, somebody who's respected and stuff, people make mistakes. I mean, don't get me wrong, but, but when you know a woman is married and you're peeping in on her, and then you see her taking a bath, then you call her and then you impregnate her, then you find out who was her husband, then you call him, then you tell Job to put him in the front line of the war so he can die because you just impregnate. <laughs> That's pretty uh, gruesome and disgusting and stuff like that. And we don't have that in the Quran. Right? So we do believe there was David, but we don't believe he did all that. So how does a messed up person get saved? He, he, he repents. He repents. No problem. But what? but again, repent. but repent. What do you mean? To, what? To, who? to Allah? To Allah, to the one God, to the Creator. No confession to a man. No need to kill anybody. You go to the one God, you say, you know, what's your name? My name's Sam. Sam, right? Sam. So Sam? Sam. Mm -hmm. All right. You say, Sam. Oh God, I'm Sal, I'm your, I'm your servant, I, I made a mistake, forgive me. I mean, uh, you know, there are some conditions, like for example, one, you should feel bad about what you did, you shouldn't be like, yeah, man, I did that. No, like you should feel bad, you should make a strong intention not to do it again, and then you repent to God, that's it, right? If you wrong somebody, then you should fix it with them, right? Let's say you stole my glasses, right? Then you'd be like, you know, I'm sorry, here's your glasses back, and then you repent to God. Sure, that's it. Does, does Allah require sacrifices? No, right? We, Allah forgives. Allah is the most forgiving, right? We have things that we sacrifice from our own want to please God. For example, uh, I may have some and I want to give it to the brother because I want to give sadaqah, right? I want, I want to give charity. I might uh, take a, a goat and slaughter it and give it to the poor people so they can eat, right? But Allah doesn't need a sacrifice. Allah is so merciful, so loving that your repentance is enough. Sound good? I'll give this a read up. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We don't shake hands. Thank you so much. Have a great day.